Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. All right, I am feeling summer fruit, so I think we should draw some or paint some strawberries. Now I have these lovely strawberries from, they look a little bit more like science experiments than anything else. Um, they're kind of faded. They don't have that like fresh gloss on them, but I think that's okay. I think I can still, you know, kind of make some pretty good progress painting them. Maybe even use your thumb if you've got kind of dead ones to just buff them out. This one's, this one's a little old and funky. So I'm just going to place them right here and we're going to start by sketching. I'm going to use some yellow and this is just an offloaded page. Um, it's, if you ask me, kind of ugly. So I figure it's the perfect opportunity to get a little sketching going on. So as you come on, say hi, so I know you're there. And if you have any questions, of course, ask them. So we're also working in a limited palette. So I have white gesso. You can also use white paint. This stuff is just so thick. I love it. Plain yellow or daffodil yellow from Folk Art. This is my number one favorite. Old Reliable Mermaid Tail Teal. You can also use like a Laguna or a Dark Teal or Peacock Teal. And then Tuscan Red. You can also use a, a Tomato Red. This is a little bit of a cooler, bluer red, so I'm choosing that one. All right, so we're going to take this yellow here. I'm just going to kind of pull some out of each of the things, add a little bit of gesso to it, and we're going to sketch. And so I think I'm going to start with this guy, and I see it's kind of like a shape. And, and you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. You can take some artistic license here. I, I know that it kind of goes like this on the top, and then it kind of has a second portion that kind of comes down and narrows. So if that just sort of gives the shape roughly of that strawberry, and again, doesn't have to be perfect. Your perspective here is top down, but I'm kind of coming at it from an angle. So I'm going to see slightly different things and we'll say, all right, we've got these fairly wilted, crusty, crusty green things that are all kind of got smushed in the box and are kind of all heading in one direction. So we'll just give it that look, right? And then maybe we want to add a second strawberry over here. Not exactly cheap. I almost want them to be smaller and just kind of tucked behind and just kind of, we'll make him smaller. We'll scale it a little bit, scale it down. And then he's going to have his little bits kind of coming down like so. And we'll sort that out. But there you have a basic kind of physical sketch of of the shape I'm take this guy a little bit more this way well there whatever so now that i've got that basic shape in there make sure you've got somewhere you can kind of offload your extra paint we're not doing exact replicas of the strawberries we're just trying to kind of get that gestural feel so i'm going to grab some of our lovely friend here the tuscan red and i'm going to squeeze a good chunk of gesso out or white paint doesn't matter you choose and then a bit of the teal, mermaid tail teal. And again, this just gives us some kind of colors to work with because, you know, this one plus the red, you can make a pretty good like purpley tone. Combine the three, you can make a range of, of browns. You can get good greens. You can make mushy colors. I mean, you really kind of have it all with this, with this set. It's almost a cyan, yellow, magenta, but not quite. All right, so just for kind of giggles, we're going to kind of come in and we feel like, I know we've got some really good deep red portions like right in here. I'm just kind of going to block bits in and it's pretty solid red right through here. So I'm just going to block a few pieces again. It just makes me feel good. It makes me feel like get that red out of my system before I go in and sort out the other colors because there's going to be a lot of color in here, right? Strawberries aren't just red. There's a million other things going on. Maybe a little bit down in here. Okay. So now we've kind of created an edge, maybe a little bit more in this section here. Now what I see is sort of that yellowy, greeny, orangey, we call it white. Is it really white? Pfft, no, in this section. So we want to kind of start to fill some of that in. Oh, I can see pretty good highlights here too. Eh, let's see, maybe add a little bit more red, just kind of right in this zone here. Okay. I'm going to offload my brush a little bit, grab some yellow over here. I still have some residual red on my brush which is good. I grab some white or gesso, whatever you like. And that's a good kind of orangey color. It's pretty close. I want to make it almost slightly greenish. So I'm going to just dip the tip of my brush in and kind of plop it there. Maybe a little bit more yellow to kind of shift the flavor of that color. It's kind of fleshy and boring, right? Let's get a little bit more lightness in it. It's almost like a skin color, right? We're going to do a little bit of that kind of in this zone here. And granted, that looks a little weird right now, but again, we're just kind of blocking it in. This one doesn't have as much of it, but maybe there's a little bit at the tip here. So we'll just kind of block that in there. Um, a little bit more here. And I'm going to kind of allow some of those reds to blend as we kind of move in along 
the zone. And I'm trying to keep this kind of loose and a little bit fast and not perfect, right? We don't want perfect. I'm gonna grab a little bit more red and just kind of work back up into that again to create a little bit more blend. You can see as that red gets into the mixes with the gesso and the white, it starts to pink up. And that's why I chose the Tuscan red as opposed to a warmer red because it gives us that kind of pinked up look. And we'll start a little bit of a blend in here, sort of the Tuscan red again, kind of in with that peachy tone. And we're working while the paint is wet. Just light, light, light to kind of edge that. Now granted, the outside of this looks really chaotic, but that's okay because we're gonna kind of come around it in a little while, but we're just blocking stuff in. All right, so I'm looking again, if I'm looking at your perspective straight down on this, which is different from what I see, we've got some really nice kind of highlighting like right across here, almost, almost kind of at the, the hip of the rose, not to be confused with it, or the rose, the hip of the, the strawberry. So I'm going to add just a little bit of something there, a little bit bigger, and then grab some more red and just kind of start to fill in. And again, we're almost just blocking this in. It, it looks a little rough, right? And that's okay. Blocking it in, maybe softening a little here and there. And I think we see more intense reds kind of in this zone. So we'll just start to fill that in. Yep. And then I'm looking around the edges. I can use some teal, that mermaid tail teal. And instead of just going straight with teal, I'm just going to kind of take what was on my brush without rinsing and kind of create that purpley zone. And so we'll kind of come in and we'll come under here and get a little bit of shadow kind of underneath. It's just to kind of yeah, I'm gonna grab a little bit of red here and mix some more of that. It's a nice color. A little bit's kind of in, in here. I'm going to get a lot of glare happening. This does not have to be perfect. So oftentimes strawberries aren't exactly smooth, especially if they've been sitting in the fridge a while. So sometimes you'll even get kind of like a little shadow portion kind of right, like say right here around this hip, I see a little bit of, a little bit of darkness, like right here, like a little shadow. So I'm going to try and capture some of that kind of coming around. And then a little bit more red to just blend it. So it's not quite as stark. Yeah. Okay. So it still looks a little rough, but once we add a few more layers, it, it will come together. All right. I'm going to offload my brush over here. Again, if you, I'm doing this in my offload book, so it's awfully awesome because I can just move the color on. So now let's kind of block in some greens and this is still a little weird. We'll come back to it. I want to move everything around. So it's not the same as it was. Um, but yeah, we'll block in some greens. So I'm going to take some of that mermaid tail and you know what, I'm just going to kind of mush it right on into this kind of weird peachy color we had. And notice how muddy that is. That's a really pretty decent muddy color. Yeah, a little bit of red to just kind of darken it. And uh, I've kind of sketched some of those pieces in here. Now I feel like I need some more deep tones in there, but it's okay. Again, we're still just sort of color blocking. And I'm actually gonna come down over that strawberry to kind of help create that um, that sort of divot that often happens when you have strawberry greens. It has a divot there. So the strawberry is almost heart-shaped. I think that's why they're so popular for Valentine's Day. I'm coming in here, mixing a little bit more. And that's a really intense green. That's pretty. But do we see that anywhere here? No. So we're going to have to make it way less exciting with some yellow and some red. Now I'm finding, I'm not sure I can really get dark enough. So I may have to add another color just for the sake of kind of getting the deep tones, the values that I want. And that could be why I grab some dioxazine purple, probably not black. We're not really big fans of, of using black um, here. Whoops, well, I, was, I was thinking, I'm just gonna offload further around these guys because I plan on covering most of this up. Of course I was like spaced out and offloaded directly onto my strawberry. We'll take a little bit of yellow and kind of smush it here and maybe lighten some of that up so we can get some something going on. I can kind of differentiate. Pretty, pretty ugly, right? It's okay to be in the rough zone. Art goes through ugly rough stages. All right, so now I'm gonna just mix a little bit more. Add some gesso, add some more gesso. 
Add some more gesso and a kiss of red over here. Just a little bit over here. I'm going to find that in-between space. And notice, sometimes you've got to kind of mix a little bit between the two to find your zone. And that is a lot greener than I thought it was. And it's funny because a color can look one way in your head and right in front of you, but then when you like slap it on your on your project, you're like, holy cow, what did I just do? So I'm going to grab a little bit more in the red zone here and kind of red that back. I lost some of the warmth, which isn't my favorite, but that's okay. Let's see, where else do we have a highlight? I see a, it's kind of washed out, but we've got a little highlight through here. Maybe a little bit more highlight here. Maybe a little highlight here. Okay. So we've got some really funky, mushy colors. It looks a little weird, but no problem. We're good. More red. Kind of just bring it in. Intensify a few spots. Keeps it interesting. I'm going to do a little blend with a red right in here along that edge. So it's a little less, a little less harsh. Maybe even finger paint a smidge to kind of soften that up. When in doubt, blend with your fingers. Your fingers are much more sensitive than your brushes. Okay, go ahead and offload. You can offload wherever you like, because again, we're going to kind of paint over the whole background anywho, so it doesn't really matter. And at this point, I'm feeling like it's a good idea to just rinse that brush because we're going to transition to a smaller brush now. And it might be really useful for mixing because from here, we're going to start doing some little tiny details with a um, little skinny mermaid tail brush. It's a fine liner. And it's fairly short bristle. Like sometimes I go with really long bristles, but because we're actually looking at placing dots on this as opposed to um, as opposed to creating long, you know, swirling lines, a shorter bristle is going to be easier to plop, plop, plop down. So I did rinse this guy. Ooh, he's very wet. Well, that's okay. We're going to come back and mix ourselves a nice dark purpley color, which kind of creates a good base. Now that's very violety. I want to neutralize it a bit so I'm grabbing some yellow to neutralize it. Now it's a kind of ultra ugly color pack. We'll use some of that to kind of add some shade into the into the greens here. I get a lot of glare going on. If I give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a blast it'll probably help some with the glare. We also got a little bit of a rumple but that's okay right? It's cheap cheap paper but it's the perfect place to play and experiment and kind of Feel your way through things. Okay. Maybe didn't mix enough in that, but we'll find out. Put that guy there for a minute. I'm going to come in with our little tiny brush, and you're going to start to place, you know, I could use a bigger brush on this, couldn't I? Well, let's see. We're going to start to place just sort of dots. So you can really kind of lay it on, just use the whole bristle, and it's okay to get right out there to the edge. They're slightly elongated, so it's not a perfect dot because these are all seeds. Now, like cartoonish looks, sometimes these things actually are white and other times you'll see them in yellow. We're, we're creating kind of a dark base with them first and then we'll probably come in and add a little bit more interest to those seeds. But first you want to just kind of place them. So instead of being perfectly random, you want to think of almost just sort of grouping them and Think of them as growing together and they kind of grow in a direction in a rounded way around that berry. Now, granted, there's still going to be some kind of random off the wall ones that I want to call them homeless because that's not what they are, but slightly nonsensical. But for the most part, while not perfectly even, they still appear to be kind of have a, a system of their own, if not perfect. I'm just gonna keep coming and keep coming and we're getting these dark, basically muted purple, muted purple dots. Now, if you really aren't feeling like mixing your own, you could always grab something like a violet, like the Craft Smart Violet's great because it's very, very dark. The Apple Barrel Royal Violet is also good. These are really dark colors. In fact, we'll use one of these. So it's gonna be, more vibrant than the color that we mixed, but I think we could still, we can probably still get away with it. Let's see if I just change up to that. Yeah. Yeah, it still works. 
So there you go. If you don't feel like mixing because you've got a dark purple on hand, awesome. If you don't have a dark purple, then like a, a teal and a red combined is awesome. And the teal is great because it's got, you know, a little bit of green in it. And so it'll neutralize things. And so there, you know, the different blues out there have very different feels as well. Okay. So then as we kind of come to the edges, you almost want to have those seeds slightly going off the edge because they're not exactly flush. They kind of pop out and are dimensional. Okay, this is, I don't want to say this is tedious, but oh my gosh, you guys, this is a lot of, it's a lot of seeds. And they're going to gather a little bit more tightly towards the bottom here, a couple going off the edge. And, you know, I think sometimes even if you're just kind of, I don't want to say feeling lazy, but not feeling it on doing all these seeds, you can sometimes even get away with, you know, leaving a, like a little blank spot. And it'll probably look pretty, pretty believable. And the part where you guys are going to kill me is when I say, okay, and then we got to go over some of these with another color because they're not all going to be that dark. A few little gaps. And so I guess you can kind of imagine that we would have the same on this guy here. If I go maybe even faster, let's see if we can do like speed bound. Boop, 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 boop. Again, they're almost in rows and lines, but not exactly. So it's kind of like you can be a little bit random and imperfect and just kind of roughly feeling your way through that. But you notice how the dots they, or the thingies kind of start to change angles from time to time. And yes, if you're just joining me and you're like, what is going on in the background? Yes, I know it's ugly. It's going to become a nice light Bahama blue shortly. It's just not yet. This is just a scrap page. And I just love, love you know, being able to draw and paint directly over the scrappy stuff because I feel like if I mess up, well, who cares? It's already a mess, right? Sometimes it's a great way to just let loose and relax and get outside of yourself and let go of the fear of, did I do it right? Or, you know, we're all insecure when we make art, even seasoned professionals. I mean, you may have fewer and far between moments of insecurities, but they're still there. All right, I'm going to add just a little, little swoosh of purple in a few spots here. <clears throat> Excuse me, there goes my voice. Kind of especially in the under portions, like down in here. And more than anything, that just adds a little depth and interest. Again, these, looking at these, they're all dried up and crusty. So they're pretty, well, they're dried up and crusty. What can I say? They're not, they're not fantastic because these are not the freshest, prettiest ones, in fact. I forget, we, we did a science experiment for my daughter um, in sixth grade. And we were like trying to determine how much like DNA material was in each, or genetic material was in each of these. And it was whole, I forget. It was cool, though. And I feel like we've determined like the old ones had like kind of the, the DNA or genetic material had kind of deteriorated a little bit. So there was less of it because so you get these weird, funny strings of stuff. Okay. See, so look at that, that weird skin color and that weird green actually now look like the white part of a strawberry or the unripe portion. So I do need to get these purple dots a um, little bit dry because I want to come over them a bit. Okay, so we're gonna mix the color that's in our head and then we're gonna make it the right color. So we're gonna kind of follow along. Actually, in fact, this might even be the right color right here, this sort of that yellow. Or my yellow is all dry, so let's add some more. Squeeze. So this is this is lovely, right? But it's probably more accurate for the seed color. <laughs> Oh, chai, you guys can't see that. They look red, you know, until you get way up there, but that is not a pretty color. All right, so I'm going to try this with some purple here. Let's see if we can get close with that purple and yellow. Yep, that's pretty good right there. So here we'll make a big vat of it, so to speak, so that I have enough to work with. All right, so I just used this brush for mixing right now and fill in a bit here and there it doesn't matter I'm just using up my pigment coming back to my little guy here and we're going to just come in with that color kind of just plop it kind of on top of these 
not perfectly. And we're not going to do all of them, but we're going to just do kind of a handful of them. Especially along sort of the upper edge. And you want to let that purple that's underneath sort of show through. So these dots can be smaller, kind of mostly on top of slightly next to, but overlapping, you know, just keep them kind of more or less in the same direction. So you don't have this sort of shock of like what's going on. But here it creates that sense of like the seed sitting inside a little divot and casting like a shadow. And that's sort of what we're going for here. And then we'll do some of those along the top here because I'm assuming we've got a little bit better light, you know, along the tops here and here and here. Again, perfection is really not a thing. Sometimes I find the more I work to be perfect, the more like stiff and I don't know, stiff a piece of art can be. So relax, let loose a little. Okay. So now we've got kind of some of those dots forming along the edges here. I think also just kind of a few in this zone. So sometimes, you know, that little extra detail helps along the edges and then your brain fills in the whatnots in the middle. And we can even mix a slightly darker version by adding some more purple to that. It's not exactly great for my brush there, but. A few bits and bobs, a few bits and bobs. I know you're sitting here like, okay, we've watched you dot this enough, Wendy. Come on now. Maybe see if we can use some of that up in here, just a few bits and whatnots. Of. Doesn't really much matter. Okay. Go ahead and squish your skinny brush. Squish it, squish it, squish it. And then you can squeeze that. Squeeze those bristles. Let it go. And then we'll take the big guy, squeeze him, get him dry. And now I just want to kind of start to add some background here. So I'm going to go with the Bahama blue and we'll sort out some shadows. Oh, in a minute. Oh, you know what? No, let's do shadows now. So I'm going to take some water, maybe some of this, a little some of this. I want it kind of purpley with a touch of, touch of white to it. Just kind of create like a little shadowy something down here, just kind of right underneath. A little bit darker purple just kind of right under there but again I'm, I'm letting it blend on top of that wet which is why i sort of started with a lighter color first a little something a little kiss right under here and it always is that so shadows whenever you do them are always darkest directly under the item and then generally as as the shadow moves away it gets lighter and lighter so just always kind of a good rule of thumb to to think on when you're when you're doing something like this. So kind of come around little little smushes here and there. I'll probably paint over a lot of this, but by just kind of getting it in, you sort of build that sense of, of grounding. Hey there, Julia, good to see you. Thank you, Julia says, looking good. We're drying. Okay, now we're gonna take this tealish cup. Oh, you know what, let's dry this. Otherwise I'm gonna have a mud pie instead of strawberries. So if I leave that, so I've got a big sort of purple ridge right here and it's thick wet paint. If I leave that and I accidentally get, you know, my other paint in it, you know what's going to happen is so huge purple streaks. Okay, there we go. Now this is pretty stark. I feel like I could also, I could doodle decorate my mouse. You know, I doodle decorated my last mouse. But this one plugs, I don't know. We could do that one day. So this is a little bit much for me. I feel like for today we want to take it down a notch. So I'm going to actually attempt to see what happens if I kind of take that over here and kind of make a smushy version. A little bit of gesso to lighten it up. All right, let's try that. Okay, I'm just going to come along through here. Just kind of roughly outlining. And then as we kind of come around the top, we can get in closer. And again, just kind of jiggle, jiggle in. If you wiggle, wiggle. Just kind of start to 
do so. So I'm going to focus like, you know, my best colors, like right along the edges of these guys. I'm just kind of wiggle, wiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Just kind of get it placed. Now notice there's even like a little place where it kind of kicks out on either side because it's casting a shadow. And in fact, now some of the highlights and colors begin to make sense. Look at that. Look at it, it just completely like popped right off from being mushy smushy to sort of in making sense. So again, we've added a lot of this kind of funky, almost diarrhea brown color. I didn't say that out loud, but I did. Um, to the to the blue, and I feel like it neutralizes it a bit, makes it a little bit more interesting, and it's not perfectly blended either. So you kind of have, you know, a, a variation of color going on as we as we place it. So now suddenly, we went from well, we, we had we had a, we had a long awkward face, if you want my opinion, and it just kind of comes together. So sometimes you just gotta be really patient with yourself. Um, and know that if you're not satisfied with it, well, maybe it's just not done yet. Add a couple of bits of the teal in here just to kind of create some light and, and space in between these strawberry bits a little bit, but you can kind of still see some of the background happen in a few spots. I feel like that keeps it lively. If you're feeling like it's a little bit like you need some, I don't know, keep it interesting, we could add a little kiss of just raw teal and a few of the shaded zones. Not too much, but a little little bits. I'm going to put some just kind of right in here on some of those seeds just for fun. I don't know why, but I always feel like there's like teal or purple or magenta or fluorescent orange in the shot, hiding in the shadows. Yep. So a few of those. And you know what that does is it gives it that sense almost of like this sort of light, light teal, um, base or background kind of reflecting that color back up on the bottom of these. And I did that just by kind of whopping a few bits of the teal kind of along the darker seeds at the edge. A little something in here to just kind of help differentiate that. Ooh, you know what? I love that. I'm going to give a couple more swooshes of teal, a little bit bolder. Yep. A little bit along here. Good. And then the purple, the yellow. And yeah, now I'm just kind of looking at how can I lighten it up, keep it believable. Sometimes I go a little extra with that teal. Oh, Julia says, oh, wow, that looks so good. Thank you. I'm going to take some white and go super light and go lighter here just to kind of catch a, a highlight or two on the leaves. And I've kind of lost the whole shape of those things. But then again, you look at these and they're sort of smushy smushes. So like nobody's paying attention. All right. Well, I think that kind of covers us. That was, uh, you know, just a fun how to do a strawberry in under 30 minutes. And these lack shine kind of in the same way that these slightly old sad ones also lack shine. Um, if you had a glossy, fresh, super plump strawberry, um, it might look a little bit different. You might have a little bit more highlight in here especially around where the seeds are, but because, because this is lost to shine, this is a fairly ac accurate representation. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you have any questions and uh, we will see you guys next time. Love you much. Bye.